Section 8.5, centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration. Let's think through all the accelerations we've seen in this chapter so far. We've introduced the angular acceleration, that alpha, the tangential acceleration, which is how the angular acceleration can change. But we've previously already seen an acceleration with circular motion. What acceleration was that? That was our centripetal acceleration. Do you remember how we calculated that? That was when we said our centripetal acceleration was a sub c is equal to v squared over r. And we said that this centripetal acceleration occurs any time that something is traveling in a circle. We've specifically focused on uniform circular motion, where an object is tra traveling at a constant speed in the circle. And then there is this centripetal acceleration pulling that object towards the center. So we can do the same thing here, where we're going to have a centripetal acceleration. But now, instead of calling it just any velocity, we're going to be specific that it is the tangential velocity. Right? So the plane is moving with this velocity v. It is tangential to its motion. Of the circle. So all we have to do is fill in a t here, which is what is shown below. The centripetal acceleration is vt squared divided by r. If we want to work in terms of our angular variables, we can plug in for our tangential speed. We know that we can calculate that with r times the angular velocity. We square both of those and divide by r. One of the r's will cancel, and we get that our centripetal acceleration can be calculated with the radius times the angular speed squared, where omega, the angular speed, needs to be in radians per second. Oh, and I should add a C subscript here. So that's our centripetal acceleration. So what we've seen with uniform circular motion. We're now able to introduce the ideas that we've seen in this chapter, which is non-uniform circular motion. In non-uniform circular motion, our tangential velocity, our tangential speed is able to change. It's able to increase or decrease. For that to change, for it to start going faster or slower, we need an acceleration that's not just pointing perpendicular to the velocity, but an acceleration that's able to point in the same direction as the velocity or against the velocity. In other words, we need a tangential acceleration to change the tangential speed. That's what's depicted in this lower picture for non-uniform circular motion. We have the centripetal acceleration still, because even if the speed is changing, it still is traveling in a circle, it needs to have that inward acceleration. But now we also have this tangential acceleration that's in the same direction as the velocity, and thus is able to speed up the airplane that's on a rope here. So the overall acceleration is going to be a combination of the tangential and the centripetal acceleration. These two accelerations will always be perpendicular to each other. And so you can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? If I redraw one of my arrows over here, like my a sub t, we can see that we have a triangle and we can use our Pythagorean theorem here and say that a c squared, this centripetal acceleration plus the tangential acceleration squared is equal to the overall acceleration a squared. So if we want to find the overall acceleration a, we're going to need to take the square root of the centripetal acceleration plus the tangential acceleration. There we have it. Let's try this out with an example. Example seven, a discus thrower. If you've ever done track and field, you may have seen someone who's thrown a discus, right? And unlike the shot put where it's sort of on your shoulder and you just fling it as hard as you can, for the discus thrower, they hold it out in their arm and you see them spinning around 
to get it up to speed and then they fling it out that way. So it's a great example of rotation. So starting from rest, the thrower accelerates the discus to a final angular speed of plus 15 radians per second in a time 0.27 seconds before releasing it. During the acceleration, the discus moves in a circular arc of radius 0.810 meters. Find the magnitude of the total acceleration. The problem gives us a clue here in that it gives us a picture that shows there is a centripetal and a tangential acceleration. The key is that there will always be a centripetal acceleration if it's traveling in a circular path. And then there will be a tangential acceleration if the speed is changing. Which in this case, we notice that the disk starts at rest and gets accelerated to a final speed that is not zero. So there must be a tangential acceleration as well. We'll need to combine the tangential acceleration with the centripetal acceleration to get the total acceleration. So let's take a look at what they give us, right? They give us this final angular speed, right? They also give us the initial angular speed of we're starting from rest. That tells us we start out at zero. They give us the time and they give us a radius. This is a pretty good set of things in order to calculate the acceleration. So we know these angular variables, so we can thus calculate the tangential acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, using our angular variables. Let's give it a shot. So our centripetal acceleration we can calculate with r times omega squared, the angular velocity squared. So this is going to be 0 0.810 meters times 15 radians per second squared, where we'll just use the final angular velocity to find the centripetal acceleration at that last instant when the thrower releases it. This would be the largest possible acceleration because that's when the disk is traveling as fast as possible. For the tangential acceleration, we're going to need to consider how the speed changes from zero up to that 15 radians per second. So we know our tangential acceleration is r times the angular acceleration. And the angular acceleration involves the change in angular velocity divided by time. So our final is 15 radians per second minus our initial of zero. That disappears, divided by the time interval, and then multiplied by r to make that a tangential acceleration instead of an angular acceleration. So we get a centripetal acceleration of 182 meters per second squared, tangential of 45 meters per second squared. We can find the total acceleration by taking the square root of each of those squared and added together. So the square root of, oh, the squares disappeared, of 182 meters per second squared and squared and 45 meters per second squared squared. That's funny. It won't come out right unless you square those before adding them together and taking the square root. And then you will get the answer of 187 meters per second squared. So this is a linear acceleration, just like we've seen before for accelerations, but the magnitude now has a component that is the centripetal center seeking and tangential along the motion. So it's pointing in an entirely new direction, which we could again figure out using an inverse tangent. So this highlights how we can have both a centripetal acceleration and a tangential acceleration that work together for an overall acceleration if an object is traveling in a circle and the speed of the object is changing. We'll see both of those present.